For decades, Harjo Pier's Port Dam has been plagued by the invasive water hyacinth. While its outgrowth has been under relative control, it appears in recent months the plant has seized Harjo Pier's Port Dam surface once again, covering almost 50% of its surface. This explosion of water hyacinth has not only negatively impacted the surrounding community's livelihood, but also impacted the dam's water quality by destroying ecosystems dependent on it. Eyewitness News digs deeper into the problems this plant is causing and how its invasion can be stopped. Harjo Pier's Port Dam, locally called Harjo's, is a popular getaway destination known for its scenic views and water activities. But in its current state, the recreational activities have been halted because of water hyacinth. Surrounding businesses that utilize the dam have felt a negative financial impact. This is the situation for the Harjo's Boat Company. At the end of January, 82 passengers and crew who were on board one of their boats, the Alba, were forced to be evacuated after its motor propellers got entangled with the water hyacinths and all discarded fishing nets. The Alba, the latest addition to their fleet, has been docked since. I mean, for my boss, last week we had to actually block all cruises. We had no cruises because we tried the week before to go out um, and it didn't end up well. So my boss said, you know what, let's just uh, be safe. The company is also currently operating on skeleton staff. I mean, there's a lot of people that we had to um, kind of not lay off, but just say, listen, guys, we don't need you at the moment. We're not busy. We can't afford to have you guys around. So we'll, we'll call you guys when it's ready. And there's not really much for us to do if the boats are not going out. At first glance, water hyacinth appears attractive, especially when its purple flowers start to bloom. So how did water hyacinth become such a pest? We ask the experts. Yeah, well, what this uh, it's caused by a high level of nutrients. So these are the nutrient inputs from the May major rivers. Some of these rivers are Hinops, Sesmil Spread, Carl Spread, Crocodile River, and Yuxke River. The nutrients are mainly nitrates and phosphates that come from human waste. Unfortunately, South Africa has got very polluted water, and this is largely as a result of wastewater treatment works that aren't compliant with um, water quality guidelines. Uh, the maintenance of our infrastructure, so you get pipes that are best and then they just Floor and then they waste water for like days without being fixed. When water hyacinths overgrow, they essentially create a floating mat that prevents sunlight from reaching the water. This blocks important natural processes from occurring, such as photosynthesis carried out by other aquatic plants. So if you compare to that portion, you see there is open. That's how water is supposed to be. Now there is enough sunlight coming to support whatever is happening, the life underneath. But if now you're having this layer that's covering, that's preventing this sunlight, so it's, uh, it's breaking, breaking up uh, uh, several like, life cycles. Water hyacinth originated in the Amazon Basin of South America and was first recorded on the Val River after being imported to South Africa in 1910. Since then, it has spread around the country and the plant continues to grow prolifically. You know, like insects in, 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 in South America, where it comes from, there is a predator-prey relationship, so the, the predator will keep in balance. So now there's no predators. That's why one of the control measures is to try to import uh, uh, weevils or some special insects that feed on it in, in natural uh, 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 habitat. So because they are not here, so it, it, it's able to thrive and outcompete the, the indigenous uh, uh, species. Water hyacinth is a Category 1B weed, which means it is illegal for you to possess it. So why has it been so hard to control the growth of water hyacinth? Experts say it's because the plants regenerate very quickly. One plant can produce thousands of seeds. The seeds last for about 25 years. We are looking at a huge seed bank um, in this system. So even though we get rid of all the, the vegetative growth on the surface, there's millions of seeds in the sediment. Governments and other organizations have attempted to control water hyacinth growth for decades. 
Despite seeing some successes, they have never been able to completely rid the dam of the plant. In 2017, the use of herbicide control was halted, which saw 50% of the dam being covered in water hyacinths. In 2018, Rose University Center for Biological Control, funded by the Departments of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, was mandated to get involved to clear the dam of the plant using biological control. We were quite apprehensive about it given the political nature of the dam, given how polluted it is, um, given that it's on the high felt which gets very cold winters and cold winters kill insects. And so we changed our approach to biological control in that Historically, we've relied on what we call classical biological control, where we, we, where we investigate these insects, we, we make sure they're safe, they'll only feed on the plant that they targeted against, we'll release them onto the system and hope that they then take off and do their thing. With this new agent that we call Megamella scutellaris, or the water hyacinth hopper, we decided to change tack and look at um, inundative releases, where we reared the insects in Grahamstown at the CBC's um, mass rearing facility, sent them to Harder Beersport every two weeks or so, sending between six and 10,000 insects every two weeks. This proved greatly successful, with the plants brought under control by the end of 2019 and beginning of 2020. And at the end of March 2020, less than 5% of the dam was covered by water hyacinth. Additionally, the operational costs for it were minimal when compared to chemical or mechanical control of the plant. But if it was a success nearly three years ago, why has water hyacinth returned? Unfortunately, 2022, um, the dam was invaded by another plant as water hyacinth disappeared. And that's a little plant called Salvinia minima. Um, highly invasive, we don't have a biocontrol agent for it yet. And what it did was take over the dam because of the surplus of nutrients in the water. Salvinia minima polluted the dam the same way the water hyacinth did, by shading out the surface. This prevented light from reaching the seas of the water hyacinths embedded in the sediment. But, after the heavy rains in Gauteng in late November, all waterways connected to Hartebeersport Dam flowed through, clearing out all the Salvinia minima and allowing light to penetrate to the water hyacinth seeds. It, it is an endless cycle. If we don't take this, um, an augmentative approach where we target the plants coming back as soon as they come back, and we missed it this year because it, it, it happened in December. Um, so yeah, we just need to be more vigilant. We need to make sure we always have a steady supply of insects available. We still send from Grahamstown. Every, every week we're sending insects here, but it's just not enough. So we really have to rely on you know, these, these estates um, around the dam to, to rear insects that will complement what we release onto the system. On 31 January 2023, the Department of Water and Sanitation met with stakeholders and the CBC of Rhodes University to discuss how they could deal with the hyacinth issue at the dam and reached a dam management plan. Some of their commitments, the department said, would involve reinstating programs to restore the dam and larger catchments contributing to the condition of the dam. The department has also commenced with a conditional assessment and refurbishment of the cables that were previously used to retain their hyacinths and to ensure that there is this easy removal of these plants as well as other undesired material in the water. But while Hartebeersport Dam may be the most notorious water hyacinth invasion hotspot, other well-known water bodies in Gauteng have been infested. For lakes in Benoni, the invasive plants has affected surrounding businesses. The community has taken it upon themselves to fix the problem, as they claim the Egoruleni municipality's efforts have failed to control it. The Benoni Lake Club, which is located at Middle Lake, is one business that tried but the outgrowth was too much. Well, um, we were basically doing it manually when it was, when it was uh, on a smaller scale. We tried to remove it manually by sending guys in there with rakes and removing it. And uh, it's obviously very labor intensive, very costly and all the rest, but 
when once it's got to a point like this you there's nothing we can do community members say the municipality tried to remove it but often left the hyacinths on the side of the dam which then returned to the waterway but some businesses have managed to clear it out in the area one of these is the Pannoni sailing club which is located on the homestead lake in Pannoni. okay well that's done by simply manpower interest of the various clubs and their members and local residents so the residents have set up their own hyacinth clearing team they clear on a fairly regular basis from the top of the dam we as a club also clear our own hyacinth away as do the scouts and the kayak clubs but while hyacinth growth appears to be under control there, major concerns remain for the other invaded lakes. All the lakes used to be known as the jewel of the East Rand. It isn't anymore, unfortunately. What's the point in having a lake if it looks like a field? The municipality, they do come here occasionally, uh, do a little bit of work, but it's not a, a committed, serious effort. It, it's... Uh, I might say it's more window dressing. I think that they are doing something. Eyewitness News tried to contact the Egurulini municipality, but did not receive any responses by the time of publication. Experts say the ultimate solution to removing water hyacinth is the involvement of multiple role players, governments, businesses and residents. We need what we call an integrated management plan, um, and it also needs to adopt a strategic adaptive management framework where we can apply a plan but also understand or recognize that we might need to change it if there's a flood, um, if there's sudden nutrient spill, um, if there's a very cold winter and all the insects die. The experts also have a message for communities living in nearby cities. Watch what you put into your toilet, watch what you flush down your sinks, um, and also lobby for, for cleaner water, lobby for your municipality to fix sewage leaks or you know put pressure on your on your municipality to comply with, with water quality. It's, it's coming from Joburg, it's coming from Pretoria. And um, yeah, if we didn't have all that coming in, we'd probably have a clean dam.